Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, my name is Ted Halsey. I'm Vice President of Marketing at eFolder and your host for today's event. Welcome to the eFolder Expert Series. This webinar series brings together leading eFolder experts from the eFolder partner community for technical and how-to discussions. The topic for today's webinar is Taming Cloud Storage Costs, Rolling Consolidation and eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect. Today we are joined by John Hardwick, President of Inexio. In just a moment, I will further introduce John. Before we go through the agenda, let's cover a few housekeeping items. Today's session is being recorded. The recorded version of the webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. We will also make copies of the slides available to those who attended the event. With over 131 people registered for today's session, we have put all participants in listen-only mode. You can enjoy the audio portion of today's event by either streaming it to your computer or by dialing in over the phone. Questions are strongly encouraged throughout. We have planned a special Q&A section at the end of today's discussion, but you may submit them as we go along, and we will try to address your questions on the fly. Now for the agenda. First, I will briefly provide a bit of context for the discussion by making sure everyone is familiar with eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect. Then, I will explore some of the technical challenges, or the traditional challenges, rather, with data growth for eFolder BDR with Shadow Protect. John will then take the floor, and John will share how rolling consolidation works and give you how-to tips on implementing the capability. Lastly, we'll have plenty, we will have plenty of time for your questions during the Q&A section. Now let me introduce today's guest. John Hardwick is the president and owner of Anexio, a traditional break-fix VAR making the transition to managed services based in the Kansas City metro area. John has 13 years of experience as a VAR and is a member of the eFolder Partner Council. And, and Inexio has been an eFolder partner since 2008. John, welcome today's web, to today's webinar. Thanks, sir. OK. Um, all right, so let's, let's kind of kick things off and talk and just provide a bit of context for all the partners who have joined us today on what eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect is. So eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect is an end-to-end -end backup and disaster recovery service that eFolder offers on a wholesale basis to managed service providers, VARs, and solution providers. It allows you to turn around and deliver to your clients a complete end-to-end -end business continuity solution. Um, let's, go through the let's, through the, let's go through the components really quickly. First of all, the first thing you, you need to do is we've, we've partnered with StorageCraft, and you put the StorageCraft Shadow Protect software on the um, servers that you're interested in protecting. So here on the left-hand side, you would deploy Shadow Protect, the Shadow Protect agent on each server. And then eFolder supplies our partners with something we call a BDR appliance. A BDR appliance is a purpose-built appliance that acts as a storage server and as a standby server to provide on-site and fast backup and disaster recovery. So the eFolder BDR appliance is also running um, StorageCraft software namely Shadow Protect and, image and StorageCraft Image Manager. And all of the snapshots or images that are produced by these agents are stored on the BDR appliance. And then nightly what occurs is the eFolder software running on the BDR appliance backs up those images um, to the eFolder storage cloud. So the on-site BDR appliance serves as a storage point. It serves as a recovery point that would allow you to quickly virtualize any down server that had a hardware problem on at that location and provide uptime and resiliency for production servers. And then if a massive disaster strikes a location, say a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, a fire, any sort of disaster that would um, render an op a business location inoperable, you can then, we've of course already backed up those images on a daily basis to the eFolder storage cloud. And then eFolder partners have various different disaster recovery options at their disposal when and if a disaster happens at a client. The images can be downloaded. That's not normally the, the, the main course of action because of the size of the images stored in the cloud. We can ship you uh, the images overnight on physical media. Um, or alternatively, you can actually recover the servers in the eFolder continuity cloud. The eFolder continuity cloud is a virtual compute space that eFolder can provision on demand for partners where you can then download and decrypt from the storage cloud those client images, configure the virtual firewall, and then virtualize the client servers and run them 
um, on a production basis in the eFolder uh, continuity cloud. So that's kind of the overall uh, you know, vision of how this solution works. Now, one of the challenges that partners have historically faced is you always want to control and manage the cloud storage costs um, because that is a cost driver in the solution. Um, it's how eFolder charges our partners partially. And um, you want to be able to predict and control those cloud storage costs. And one of the things that historically has been a challenge with this solution is that at the end of every month, you would end up with a consolidated monthly image. So the last day of the month, the eFolder software running on the BDR appliance would uh, take the consolidated daily and the consolidated monthly and then store those in the eFolder storage cloud. And that's fine, but what ends up happening 12, 18, 24 months out is you're, you're, you have a whole bunch of consolidated monthlies that are recovery points that you don't really require uh, for the client and that's causing your cost to go up. Those are costs, in some cases, you can pass on to the client, but they're costs in other cases where it's simply eating into your margin and driving up cloud storage costs. And so what partners have traditionally done is they've reseeded the data center after every 12 to 18 months um, in order to put a new base image there and to combat the problem of the buildup of consolidated monthlies. Um, that's perfectly valid, but that's extra labor that you're having to inject into the equation, which costs you, again, costs you time and money. So we're very happy today to, to introduce this new feature capability, which is called rolling consolidation, which is now available for eFolder BDRs for Shadow Protect uh, when you're running Shadow Protect version 5 and Image Manager 6. So um, I'm going to let John talk in greater detail about that, but I, one thing I just want to mention before we move on, though, is there are other deployment scenarios for eFolder um, uh, with Shadow Protect. One, one potential option, we call this eFolder Cloud for Shadow Protect, and this allows you, if you have a client who has a single server and doesn't have the budget or the desire for fast on-site recovery, you can still use Shadow Protect to image the, image the production server and use soft, eFolder software and the eFolder Cloud to provide um, backup of those images to the eFolder storage cloud. So um, that's one deployment scenario. And then the other deployment scenario is, of course, you can also build your own BDR. eFolder supplies partners with uh, purpose-built appliances uh, for these applications, but some partners want to use their own brand of server. So you can take the different software components, which we've discussed, and put them on any brand of Windows storage server um, that you like. So I just wanted to mention those two other deployment scenarios, but the problem is still the same. You want to be able to combat this challenge of the buildup of consolidated monthlies, and rolling consolidation is the feature to do that. So with that, let me turn the phone over to John, and he'll talk about rolling consolidation and how to deploy it into your client environments. John, are you there? Yeah, thanks, Ted. Sorry about that. Um, okay. As Ted mentioned, rolling consolidation is the major new feature in the new release of Shadow Protect. Um, as he kind of discussed too, the biggest pain that we felt as a VAR was you're sizing the solution with a customer and you're worried about data change and that type of stuff, but is, at least with our typical customer, we would find that most of them didn't need a recovery point 30, 60, 90 days out. They really cared about the day prior or the two, week, two or three weeks prior. And we would end up having to build a client as, the, as their growth and the time period elapsed from the time we had last made that base image. Um, we would end up having this perpetually growing expense um, that we would end up saying, okay, well, in six months, 18 months, 12 months, whatever, we'll redo your base image. And it was kind of always a balance of, balance of cost versus performance. The other bonuses that you get with the new version of the StorageCraft product is that you also can now support Server 2012 officially as well as Windows 8. And the slide. Ah, it's not and I need to give you I need to give you keyboard and mouse control. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not a problem. Okay. So the requirements for for using rolling consolidation are that you have the newest version of Image Manager, which at the time of this is 6.0. You have at least Shadow Protect version 5.0, and you 
and you have the new version of the e-folder client, which if, you, if you're upgrading an existing BDR, the e-folder client will auto-upgrade um, at this point anyway. So while it doesn't hurt to double check, that's one requirement that you don't really have to worry about. Um, if you have a BDR that's been in production for a while, you do need to make sure that you're at at least 4.0.5 first before you try and do any of these upgrades. There's instructions on the eFolder partner portal to get that prior upgrade so then you can do this process. Assuming you've met all the re requirements, this is really like a 10 minute process for a BDR single server scenario. So it should be a really quick way for all of us to reduce our storage costs in the cloud and give that better, better, better value to the client. Um, the key to scheduling this though, you will be required to reboot the BDR um, once or twice during the process and will need to reboot any of the protected servers. So if you do the upgrade during the day, you're not immediately required to do the reboot. You just receive no incremental backups of, of via storage craft or shadow protect during the day until that next reboot happens. So it is important to schedule this with that in mind um, so that you're not losing a big period that you need to be able to grab recoveries. Um, so the first step in um, in doing this process, there is a complete step-by-step um, -step instruction guide on the eFolder partner portal that announces rolling consolidation, explains the features, and also includes the download links to get the binaries that you're going to need for this process. I do recommend that you actually download and save those binaries along the way because you'll need them, you'll need at least the server installer on a couple of different scenarios, and that way you can reference it as you go. Um, the first step is you download the Shadow Protect installer. It's going to ask you if you want to do a custom or, or a standard install. Do the custom install. You'll see in the screenshot um, it's going to select everything other than the, the, the SP diagnostic tool. That should be good for using the BDR itself. Um, you should never need the diagnostic tool. Um, hit next, 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 and finish through the rest, rest of that process it will ask you at the end if you want to reboot. And that's all that's involved in actually upgrading the BDR side of things. When you connect to any of your protected machines, which becomes step two, you want to, you want to do a custom install again, except this time you don't want to put the management console or any of the other items that it's going to select on there. You really only want to install the backup agent and the snapshot driver on the machine. That way there's no UI visible to the customer that, that they could try and make any changes or anything with. Um, the rest of the process is identical though. Next, 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 finish. It will tell you that you need to reboot the computer. Um, again, you don't have to do that immediately, but you will receive no backups until you have rebooted the machine. Um, step three of the process, um, and there's notes about this in the, the documentation on the partner portal, but you do really want to make sure that you've checked all of your protected machines after you've done the upgrade. There's a series of scenarios where you may lose your, your product activation and your license keys, um, and you need to, need to go back in and re-enter those or at least validate they're there. Otherwise, you'll end up with like a 30-day trial by default um, and have a problem there. So it's really simple per protected machine. You're going to click once on the protected machine. You're going to click connect. You're going to click one more time to hit manage. You're going to go to the help menu. Go to product activation. And it's going to ask you for the serial number, name, and organization. If you do not know the serial number associated with your BDR, you can look up the BDR on the eFolder partner portal and your account list. And there's a tab there for BDR product keys. Um, complete that process. Click OK. Your license is up to date. It will recycle the Shadow Protect ser service uh, when you click OK. Um, it won't interrupt anything. And uh, then you're up to date on licensing. The last step to this is after you have all of your agents and protected servers upgraded, you do want to go through an update image manager on the server. The link to download this is in the BDR instruction upgrade guide that's on the partner portal. You download that install installer to the BDR itself. This is probably the simplest installation that any of us have ever done. You launch it. You hit yes, you want to perform an upgrade. You hit yes, that you accept the agreement. You hit next twice. And at the end, it does prompt that you reboot the BDR again. 
Um, that entire process should take no longer than three minutes. And the last piece you need to do, once the BDR comes back up, and I'm gonna slide ahead, is you need to go through and actually change your consolidation settings. This is the, the meat, and, meat and potatoes of this entire presentation. If you launch Image Manager, in the lower left-hand side, it's going to give you retention settings. This dialog box will pop up here that will ask you and give you a new option to clean up consolidated monthlies. And it will say you can keep consolidated monthlies for X period of time. That number can be as low as one month and as high as you want it to be. Do keep in mind that during that process, everything is building on that base. So um, your the e-folder calculator that I think Ted's going to discuss in a few minutes kind of has some base metrics as to how, how that storage is sized and, and can serve as a good guide if you do want to continue to size, size out and store out for longer periods of time. Um, as soon as you enter your your checkbox on your cleanup consolidated monthlies and hit OK, you will get a warning reminding you to make sure that you've upgraded all of your agents. Otherwise, none of this process will work. You hit yes on that, and you're done. If you do have multiple protected computers, you will need to repeat this retention settings and the warning dialog box for each of the protected machines. Um, the last piece, like I said, this is automatic in most BDR environments but you do want to check your backup client itself. If you launch the client, click on the system status tab on the left, click on software updates on the top, and you will see um, either if upgrades are available or not, you can hit check now. It'll take care of doing the automated update for you, and uh, you should be good from there. So John, then, maybe could you talk a little bit about um, the process you're going through uh, in your own client base and, and how you're actually going about doing these upgrades and deployments and any best practices that we've we found um, that if we're doing them remotely we can do two to three at a time even with a single single technician it takes you know if you're not accounting for reboots it takes about 10 minutes worth of activity um, per BDR slash protected machine combination the you don't you're not going to get the immediate benefits until the next consolidated monthly roll up, but the eFolder client will take care of automatically removing the historical images to your new to your new setting. You'll obviously then see your your savings off of your your storage side of things, um, and the entire process is automatic. You don't have to reseed. You don't have to rebase image. Um, all of those potential nightmare management scenarios don't exist um, for this very simple way to save some save some cost. The um, the only thing that we've had to watch is you know kind of working with clients of when can we reboot the servers. But other than that, it hasn't been problematic. Um, we've went through and upgraded probably 50% of our BDRs at this point, um, and we'll, are working on the remainders with the clients as far as figuring out what they want that new retention setting to be now that they really have it as an option. And w with with reboots, what how much time is it taking you to do to do a complete client upgrade? Maybe 30 minutes. Um, the, do the downloads aren't very large at all. Um, like I said, it is important to at least save them locally if you have multiple protected machines um, so you're not having to re-download it every time. But um, that's the that's the simplest part of the process is is just I, I you know unfortunately it can't be scripted but it's also a very minimal time investment so okay um, I want to encourage everybody on the line if you have questions uh, please go ahead and use the Q and A log um, which uh, you should see in the go to webinar application and go ahead and ask questions um, so okay so the where the rubber meets the road is when you're able to um, start implementing rolling consolidation with your clients and then implementing um, a retention policy uh, that meets their requirements and uh, saves on cloud storage costs over time. What's important, let me just kind of quickly review um, how eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect pricing works. Uh, 
in terms of one-time charges, you, of course, have the cost of the BDR appliance, which the eFolder BDR appliances range anywhere from $1,700 roughly to about $8,000, depending on how much RAM and storage is involved with each model. Um, they're customizable at, at uh, factory shipment um, and field upgradable. Then your, your main recurring cost is, number one, the cost of the Shadow Protect software licenses. So for servers, that's $20 per server per month um, or $5 per desktop per month. And then the B, B folder BDR service is $40 per BDR appliance. And that includes 150 gigs of cloud storage per BDR appliance. And then for any storage above and beyond that, it's the prices start at 29 cents a gig and go down to 20 based upon this volume schedule, which you see in the lower left-hand corner. So it's pretty critical to leverage this rolling consolidation feature. Um, you know, it will require uh, you know 30 minutes to an hour per client location to um, to do the upgrade. You can do it remotely. You need to, of course, as John mentioned, do it at a time when. Um, you know, the server reboots are not going to interrupt operations. Um, but the promise, of, the promise of doing so is the potential savings. So what I'm showing here in front of you is the eFolder uh, BDR for Shadow Protect cost wizard. If you've never uh, played around with this before, I strongly encourage you to do so. This tool is a great resource to help you forecast what your eFolder wholesale costs are going to be um, over a three-year time period, um, which is a key input for you to figure out what you're going to charge your clients and what kind of margins you're going to make over time. Um, so it incorporates the, it, it, it has, it's been updated so that it now reflects the, um, the benefits of rolling consolidation and how granular you can be in terms of how many months uh, of consolidated monthlies you're going to retain. So let's just do a quick let's just do a quick example here. So we have a three server environment. Let's say they have 30 gigs of exchange data and 300 gigs of uh, file data. So we plug this thing into the the worksheet, and then down below, on the bottom of the worksheet, um, what we so the kind of the before scenario is what a lot of partners were doing. Um, was reseeding after every 18 months. And so if you just left the number of historical monthlies to be 18, so in this example, the forecasted average off-site storage utilization for this client would be 539 gigs over a three-year period. So you would then plug in on row 36 there, 539, and then down here on row 46, eFolder would supply you with your forecasted wholesale monthly recurring charge over the 36-month period. So this incorporates the $40 a month. It incorporates the $60 a month for the three Shadow Protect licenses. And then the average um, cloud extra cloud storage utilization over that time period. Now, the benefit, of course, is if you have a client that says, look, I don't need 18 months Consolidate. I don't need 18 monthly recovery recovery points, but I only want six for this particular client. Then you see where the savings really kick in in this sort of scenario. So in this scenario, I've changed in the calculator from 18 months to six, and then the forecasted uh, utilization will be 386 gigs over the 36 over the 36 month period. So the wholesale cost will be $168 instead of $212, which is a 21% savings uh, for you, the partner, over, over that time period. Now, how you choose to be more competitive with your retail pricing on the one hand or potentially um, you know, use this as a way to boost your own margins, that's really up to you, and that's kind of the beauty of the eFolder e-folder business model is you're, up, you're on your own in terms of how you price and package these service offerings, um, but now you're able to control those wholesale uh, costs and your cloud storage utilization, which should allow you to be more competitive and have better margins over time. 
So with that, let me go back into the Q&A log here and expand this and see if we can't answer some questions that have come in in the meantime. Um, let's see here. So Joseph wants to know, or let's see here, Doug wants to know what are the model capacities and costs of the BDRs. So I touched a little bit on the costs of the BDRs. They range in price from about just over $1,700 um, to $8,000. I don't have the specs um, off the top of my head, but there's five different models to choose from. And you can specify um, custom packouts in terms of the amount of RAM and storage on the devices at, at factory shipment. And then you can also field upgrade them down the road as well. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is if you're not yet an eFolder partner, ask your um, partner consultant for the spec sheet and they'll be able to supply that to you. Or if you're an existing eFolder partner, just go to the partner center and type in uh, pricing and the price sheet will pop up uh, along with the uh, rate card. Um, so Joseph has a question, John, for you. Did you migrate any of your BDRs from an Aperture BDR, and how did that work out? We have not used Aperture's environment yet, so unfortunately I can't speak to that. OK. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just something to mention that um, eFolder supplies eFolder BDR for Shadow Protect and eFolder BDR for Aperture. So we have a uh, cloud and monitoring and BDR appliance strategy for both flavors of software. And our strategy and as a company is to provide our partners with choice and to operate an open cloud environment that allows you to figure out which is the right software solution to do the actual imaging of the server and then we supply you with a purpose-built appliance and the cloud infrastructure to back up, replicate, and recover um, the data from our cloud or in the eFolder continuity cloud, depending on whatever the case may be. Uh, Christopher wants to know, regarding partner pricing, what's a typical and practical markup for the end user customer? Um, let me go back here. Just to touch on again, so the main wholesale cost drivers, of course, are the $40 per, per location, BDR appliance, and then $0.29 cents a gig down to $0.20 cents a gig. And what, I, what we see um, is we've produced a lot of webinars on this topic in terms of pricing and packaging. And what we've seen eFolder partners be very successful at is you know, best-in-class margins can be as high as 70 to 75 percent on a recurring monthly basis. Um, so really, I, you know, uh, I think it, there's a lot of nuances in terms of how you price and package. The, the, some of the questions that come to mind are, do you charge extra, you know, time and labor uh, when and if there's a need for a client to do a recovery, to do a file-level recovery, an exchange granular recovery, to virtualize a server on site on the BDR appliance? There's, there's, Partners have different philosophies on what you tr what's included and what's not. But I think, in general, what we see is that partners, uh, the, the, the retail market will bear anywhere from 60 to 70 percent gross margins, which is kind of like a 3x markup on the wholesale monthly recurring charge. So if you see in this lower right-hand corner, what I've modeled here is the resale of the BDR appliance at a 30 percent gross margin and a target margin on a monthly basis of 66%. So what this envisions is you know, a three server environment um, with 330 gigs of data at the beginning. Um, and you could get away with charging roughly about $500 a month for that client. And you'd be making 66% gross margins over that 36 month period. This is really the power of the BDR cost wizard is for you to build uh, pricing programs and a pricing forecast that allows you to guarantee and ensure your margin and cash flow generation over the life of the, of the deployment. Let's go to the next question. Um, this is from Omar. Um, how will you go about it if the initial base image is fairly large, let's say a 300 gigabyte, and they only have a T1 pipe? Do you have any sort of NAS seeding uh, to send the base image first? And the short answer is yes, we do. E-folder 
uh, images, you know, uh, seeds, uh, scores of drives into our data center every day um, from partners. So that's the typical uh, deployment scenario. You send us the you send us the drives, we seed the data center, and we ship the drives back to you. Um, Let's see here. Brenda wants to know, is the volume discount per client location, or can it be combined? So let me back up. Let me back up to this. So good question. So, Brent, so Brenda's question, again, is, is the volume discount per client location, or can it be combined? So for the additional cloud storage, eFolder creates a single logical pool for every eFolder partner. So you get the benefits of being able to balance your larger clients with your smaller clients. So as you add client number two, client number three, client number four, each location gets 150 gigabytes, and that becomes one logical pool. And you only get into the overages if you have, say, you know, three clients, 150 gigabytes each, 450 gigs. That 451st gig will start accruing at the 29 cents a gig. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, John wants to know the BDR cost wizard. Where do you get it? You go to the eFolder Partner Center and just type in cost wizard, and it'll pull it up, and it's an Excel worksheet which you can use. Um, let's see. Uh, let me continue to go through. Um, there's a lot of questions here. So um, Doug wants to know, do you have copies of the service agreement to use with my customers for this? Um, we do have some sample agreements on the Partner Center, but what I have found is there's so much variety in terms of pricing and packaging that we don't necessarily get into the business of telling partners how to price and package and spec out service level agreements. Um, John, maybe it's a question for you. How do you actually price and package uh, your, service, your BDR service offering for your clients? At this point, um, with the most majority of our clients being, being a break-fix relationship, we've bundled and kind of, are, I guess, presented it to them as a separate offering. So it's so much for the BDR per protected server and X amount of storage, um, with the overages for the storage being billed back to them. We're in the middle of making this transition to managed services. So the plan, and this is coming from all the partners that I'm talking to, the plan is to start including those as part of our is part of our MSP offering. So you pay so much per month for protection of your server. And as part of that server, we're going to include the BDR and the protection for it with X amount of base storage. Um, so the model's changing a little bit, especially now that I can do this con this rolling consolidation. I'm going to have a little bit more control over what that server cost is that going to actually cost me um, over the long term versus having to worry about the labor to reseed it. So, Great. Great comments. I mean, the predictability here of your labor cost is a is a is a key one of the key benefits of of uh, rolling consolidation and building a managed service offering around it. Um, I do want to mention that um, there's a lot of questions on pricing and packaging, and uh, I would direct uh, you to the eFolder YouTube channel um, where we've done several very interesting um, webinars with eFolder partners talking about how they price and package. I would mention the one with Eric Thorsell of S SCC out of Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul is, is a really good one where he talks about, we talk about a couple different models and then he explains his unique philosophy on, on how to build um, uh, BDR service offerings. Um, so please check out the eFolder YouTube channel. Um, here's kind of a technical question um, from David. How does the rolling consolidation affect the size of the uploads? We have a customer with a small pipe. The the consolidation, your rolling consolidation is no is is not going to be any more data transfer than what your monthlies would be. Um, so the difference is that. I mean, you're not really going to see, and I'm going to probably get wrong on this, from our experience, we'll put it that way, from our experience, we haven't seen a significant difference on the data transfer. Um, what we're really seeing is just a reduction in the cloud storage overall, because, it, you know, at the end of the month, you're still going to transfer X amount of data. The difference is that on both sides of the of the relationship, that data is getting purged at a, at a faster rate. So. Great. Hopefully. So no real bandwidth changes. It's just It's just a matter of how much 
you know, the, the rolling consolidation takes those, that consolidated monthly and rolls it into the base image and yes. then therefore reducing the overall storage utilization. Um, yes. Let's see here. So two questions from Brian. Do you have any examples of real-world restores where a location had to restore from an off-site uh, a very large BDR backup? And how do you test this type of solution given the enormous amounts of data typically stored off-site? Um, I guess, John, let me just ask you first. Have you had to do a – can you talk a little bit about some of the restores that you've had to do? Um, knocking on wood, I've never had to do a complete um, complete replace the BDR restore. Um, we have with some clients as part of insurance audits and stuff like that virtualized their entire environment on their BDR on-premise. Um, it's 10, 15-minute process. You have it running in the VM. Um, isolated network segment and all that, and you can make sure that files and stuff are good. You can pull individual files out of the images as well. Um, you can mount the Shadow Protect images um, without a problem as far as anything that's on the BDR, um, or you can pull back using the eFolder client, any of the historical stuff. But um, no, thank, thank goodness at this point we haven't had to do the, the catastrophic ship as a hard drive um, recovery process. Right, but I think I think what that kind of points out is that really the 95% use case is is leveraging the value of that BDR appliance to to do either test restorations of an environment for compliance reasons or for for disaster readiness, um, you know, or just for those everyday disasters that will occur where there's a hardware failure and you need to run a server for an extended period of time on the BDR appliance. So that's really the 95% use case. Yeah, John, go ahead. One of the pieces that we've we've looked at doing as well now that the continuity cloud is available is kind of using the continuity cloud as a testing environment. So we restore from the BDR using the data that's already in the same data center to the to the continuity cloud can bring up a test environment. We can test that SVS upgrade at the time, um, or you know that service pack to the CRM application or any of those types of things in a virtual test environment. Um, you know where we've got resources to scale it if we need to versus having a you know a, a BDR that's going to run the image but it's never going to run the image at the same performance as the as the native server did. So the continuity cloud is going to give us a lot more flexibility to do those types of testing scenarios that we've never had as an option before. Exactly. And you know the continuity cloud is um, those are the main two use cases is periodic disaster recovery testing. Um, the way the, the continuity cloud is priced is it's we, ch we basically charge you, the partner, um, $150 a week for the medium node or $450 a week for the large node. And whether you need a medium load node or large node depends on how many servers you're going to be running. But generally speaking, a medium node, if you're doing like a testing procedure across clients, one, two, three, four, X number of clients, you probably could get away with just doing the medium node. Um, and you've got a, you know, a fixed cost. Then you have technician labor, of course to do that scenario. But um, the other thing is the question about, you know, real real world restores. I think what we've seen is uh, most of the time for a large restoration we do ship disks, but we're seeing partners more and more use the continuity cloud as the, as the first line of defense to if there's been some sort of catastrophic outage um, at a client location or um, some sort of natural disaster, the continuity cloud, partners are turning to that more and more. We did have, during Hurricane Sandy, we did have uh, numerous New York Tri-State Area eFolder partners virtualize very large client environments in the eFolder continuity cloud. And the situation with Hurricane Sandy, Sandy is kind of interesting because it wasn't so much that there were locations where that were completely destroyed. It was that the power outage was so extensive and, for, and so long term. I mean, we're talking two, three weeks. That most of the most of the situations were virtualizing server infrastructure for clients because the power there was no power to the actual location where the production servers were. So uh, Hurricane Sandy is a great use case for uh, the continuity cloud and really saved the bacon of a lot of eFolder partners during the midst of that disaster. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. So Bruce wants to know, can you confirm whether or not the original base image changes with the rolling consolidation? John, you want to address that? 
The, the original image does not, as far as the base doesn't. What will happen is, as part of the, the consolidation process that the, the image manager already handles with the weeklies and the interdailies and stuff, essentially it's going to treat the monthlies the exact same way. It'll roll the monthlies in and apply them towards, I guess technically to your point, I guess it does apply them towards the base um, to create a new, a new moving forward. Um, but it treats it as a series of sequential files still. So um, you're not really modifying the base image, at least my understanding of it at this point. Okay, lots of questions here. Um, another question, Craig wants another question on the continuity cloud. So Craig wants to know, when testing in the cloud, are you actually connecting to and testing the servers? If so, how do you fail back to production servers? Um, John, I don't know if you want to address. Have you played around with the continuity? I, 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 I know from from partner conversations, um, from people that have the 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 model goes that essentially yes, you are running a test environment, or you know, and, and I guess that really goes to your scenario. If you're testing, you're going to take the data that's already in the cloud, restore it to a running VM, and be able to run a production, you know, run for testing. Um, if you want to take that data back to your production machine, essentially, it's taking that image getting it on a hard drive and getting it shipped back to you um, as far as to go live again on premise. Um, the Storage for App product does essentially let you do dissimilar hardware restores and those types of environments. So that's really, at least my understanding, that's really the play as to where that works is you take it from your virtual environment back to a StorageCraft image, you take it back to your office, you boot off of a, off of a CD from StorageCraft and restore the image back to your server or whatever again when you're ready to go live with it. Right, and I think the other, the other important thing to, to, to note is that when you are doing disaster recovery testing in the eFolder Continuity Cloud, you want to, you know, you want to define what the scope of your test is. Um, you know, are you just uh, virtualizing the servers? Um, or are you also going through a process of configuring the virtual firewall with the IP addresses and doing a full you know, DR test. I, I, it, it's up to you how you scope that, but the important point is that there is a difference, um, you know, in, in scope. And it, it is important in our view that um, eFolder partners have gone through the process of having your techs become very familiar with how to use the virtual firewall and going through the various networking parameters that will be required to virtualize the client servers and keep their, you know, keep the, the uh, you know, keep business operations going, right? So um, the one other uh, piece I'll speak to on the continuity cloud that has came up in conversations with partners when it comes to the testing environment, um, several partners that I've discussed it with had said that they were going to like schedule a week. And, and as Ted was talking about, the costing for the, for the server space and the usage while you're in, you know, I guess a testing environment, essentially they were going to go through their entire customer base on you know, a quarterly basis or whatever, and they were going to do it across a week each quarter and say, hey, we're going to test 10 clients this week to kind of better spread better spread that expense, but also some of them were saying that they were going to build it in as part of their MSP agreement of, hey, look, here's your machine running. Here's a screenshot of it. You know, I actually logged into it versus just had an automated tool do a screenshot. But um, that was one of the use case scenarios that people had talked about for the cloud. So. Right, and and the I mean we we always are advocating this. Monetize your expertise. Do not give it away for free. Don't make it a cost. Um, either find some way to have a platinum offering in your service offering where quarterly testing or twice yearly testing is included, but you're charging a higher price every day of the year for that capability, or have it as an a la carte option which they can elect to add but you monetize it. You, you know, you can make some rough predictions of your amount of labor you're going to need to invest in the process, and you have your a, a very clear understanding of what the e-folder wholesale cost will be to do it. So try to get a 70% gross margin on doing that as an a la carte option. The key thing is to don't give it away for free. Charge for it. Um, uh, it you know, and the, the other important thing is that if you are an existing e-folder partner, Every eFolder partner has access to the eFolder Continuity Cloud for one week for free on a one-time basis for training of your technicians. So 
please do talk to your eFolder account manager and get in line to get free access to the Continuity Cloud if you have not done so already. Uh, let's see here. A um, couple other questions that have come in. Um, you know, Brian wants to know, how do, does the BDR data equal the offsite data 100% concern about corruption? And, you know, that really comes to the name of the game of what eFolder does is we provide one of the technologies we implement in our storage cloud is silent data corruption prevention. So we are creating copies of the data that's saved in our cloud, four different copies of it. We're digitally signing each 2K block, and we're continuously monitoring it. And if there ever is any data corruption, we will proactively repair it um, so that uh, what is on site on the BDR and what's in the cloud are exactly the same and there's no data corruption. When you're operating a petabyte scale storage cloud, there will be data corruption. There's no, it's not a question of, of, of if but when. And uh, vendors like eFolder have implemented technologies to combat the problem and prevent it. And that's the confidence that you can have in doing business with us. We've never lost a byte of data of partner or client data in our history as a company. So that's one of the key pieces of technology we implement in the storage cloud. Um, I believe Image Manager actually runs on the cloud side on eFolder as well. So you're getting the storage craft level verification as well, not just not just the proprietary stuff that, that Ted was speaking to. So yeah, you get double, yeah, not yet, double the protection. Not, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Let's see here. There's a lot of questions. I'm just trying to get them in uh, some sort of logical order. Um, so Bob has a question. We have some clients that do quarterly payrolls and have had to go back to monthlies before the last quarter closed. So to check this before deciding on two monthlies. Right. So maybe you want to comment on that, John? We every time that we talk to clients about backups, we have a very very in depth conversation that talks about recovery thresholds and timelines. And it's a you know how quickly are you going to realize that Sally deleted that Excel spreadsheet? And and really those are the questions that should guide what your retention period is. You know if if once every six months somebody changes this Excel file, what happens a year later when they're like oh crap she saved over the wrong file? So that's really what needs to guide those questions, and I think to your point, that's that's when you're going to realize, hey, the quarterly payrolls or those types of things. Right. So it all comes down to uh, recovery point objectives of the client, and that's where you can uh, that's where you can apply your expertise. And um, I mean, I, I think the, the the important point here is that rolling consolidation shouldn't be used in haste. Um, as a way to, you know, just arbitrarily control costs, it needs to be used with the right judgment in terms of what potential recovery points you might need um, because user error or people overwriting data or corrupting databases, that sort of thing, and that's a huge part of the problems we're combating. And so use this uh, technology judici judiciously to make sure that you've got enough monthly um, recovery points uh, for the client. Um, so just a question about Shadow Protect licenses. Christopher wants to know, can existing Shadow Protect licenses be used in cases where the end user already has some? Um, I mean, I think the basic answer is yes. I mean, if, if you've got a valid license, um, they, a valid license, um, and it has maintenance, um, you can get access to the the updates that we talked about in today's um, in today's uh, webinar. Um, the if you're sourcing licenses from eFolder on a monthly recurring basis, like is on in front of the slide in front of you, that includes and the the these new feature capabilities are available. So. But there's nothing stopping you from using the eFolder cloud and an eFolder BDR appliance with Shadow Protect software licenses that the client owns themselves. Um, you just need to make sure that they're adequately licensed and have support. John, any other comments on that particular topic? I don't have anything on that one, no. Okay. 
Um, um, so does eFolder provide a comparison sheet um, showing features of Shadow Protect versus Aperture? That's something Eric wants to know. Um, no, we do not. Um, we, we generally speaking don't want to get in the middle of that debate more or less, what we do supply is complete documentation on the features and capabilities of each and um, let partners decide for themselves um, how um, you know the two, two different applications stack up. The, our whole goal is to be able to support both of them and we do not want to get into a feature by feature comparison between the two. Um, but if you talk to your eFolder account manager, they can give you some of the highlights of some of the different um, scenarios where we've seen each software application be used. And in general, I mean, the general comment I can make is that there are, there are a handful of features in Aperture that are, make it ideal for larger data sets, namely the deduplication capability um, and some of the, the, the recovery capabilities for large volumes. Um, but the Aperture software is more expensive. So what we find is that Partners will use StorageCraft Shadow Protect for small business deployments, say up to five or six servers, and then for larger environments with larger data sets, larger numbers of servers, they'll use Aperture. And then some partners just have made a technical decision that they prefer one flavor or the other. And that's the important point, is that um, it, you, you can decide. The choice is yours. Um, I think that basically uh, wraps it up in terms of questions. Um, we're just about out of time here. Um, again, we will be sending out a copy of today's webinar presentation along with uh, links to the cost wizard, which I referenced today, along with the application note um, of the technical steps that John walked through on today's webinar. Um, John, thank you very much for joining us on today's eFolder Expert Series. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. And thank you to all the eFolder partners who joined us today. Take care and have a great day. This is Ted Holsey uh, with eFolder signing off. Take care now.